This is the smallest automatic farm base possible in Rust and it fits all of this stuff inside of it and it only costs this much to build. The build itself is pretty simple. It's just three triangles on one side and we're gonna put a double door frame on the right with two door frames on the left. The vending machine will go in this one right here. So we're gonna put some doors down for now just in case we don't have it ready. And our TC is gonna go over here with a window in front of it. Make sure you place your TC as close as you can so you can reach it easily and throw your window down when you have it ready. Head over to the side with the double door, place two squares, wall it all in, and we will eventually be placing a half height floor right here. But for now, because of the ceiling light, we need to leave this out so that we can wire everything up properly. Our large battery is going to go in front of the TC. Make sure you leave some space on the left of it so we can get our vending machine in there and then push it as close to the TC as possible. Kind of just like in the center of the triangle and then push it back and then put a window down in front of it. This just saves us on some metal fragments and makes it pretty easy to access the vending machine. Whenever you are ready to place your vending machine, you can come out here and put a triangle down. You could leave a twig and break it if you're confident you can place the vending machine correctly, but if you're scared, it's going to break when you break the twig, upgrade it to sheet metal, and then upgrade everything that I do here. I recommend upgrading your entire roof to sheet metal to make it eight rockets. This is an optional step, and don't forget if you've got the metal fragments prepared before the build, you can build directly into it where I've upgraded here. When placing your vending machine, just kind of wiggle it around, and then eventually, once you get it in the correct position, it'll let you slide it in really far. And once you've got it in there, you're good to go. And if you place it in there far enough, it'll just float, and then you can upgrade the foundation below it to sheet. Figure out how to get on your roof and then find north and place two solar panels in that direction and connect them with a root combiner. I like to place two root combiners just in case I eventually add more power to the circuit since we are using a large battery. For now, we're going to let that large battery charge, place our large planter down in here, and we're going to begin looking for good genetics for clones. This is the way I like to look for my genetics. I just get a bunch of hemp seeds or berry seeds, and then I break it until I find something that has no W's, a lot of Y's, and maybe a couple G's if we can get that in there. The X is cool. If you shift click, it plants the whole box. I'm on an admin server right now, though, so I'm not sure if that's like in the base game or if that's an admin thing on this server I'm building on. And then we're gonna place our ceiling light above that and we're gonna begin wiring everything up. After I wire everything up, I'll have a GIF on the screen that you can save uh, as to how everything is wired up. But basically you're putting an electrical branch down, setting it to five, putting that into your ceiling light over here. If you want your crops to grow as fast as possible so that you don't waste time waiting for them to grow, you need to find yourself a heater before you put this half wall down and connect it to the light. Once you do get to that point, that's when you can throw the half wall down and throw another large planter above this. A cool little tip is that when watering manually until you get your system set up, you can just throw it and both planters will get watered evenly. After you get to the point you found a heater or you decided you don't want to use a heater, you can put this floor frame down and I recommend upgrading it to brick if you've got it for a smaller hitbox. This will allow us to jump up to the second planter box and is required. You are now able to put your water barrel down in here and a large box can fit snugly underneath there for some storage. And over time, if you found some water catchers, you can start putting them on your roof whenever you do get them, or you can learn it if you've got enough tarp to craft them up. But I usually just place them on the roof as I get them, and I go to a water source to fill up a water jug and fill up my water barrel. But if you decide you want to craft them, you need eight to nine on the roof, and that should be enough. I mean, especially if you go to bed, these are going to build up overnight, and you're going to have enough water to last you through your playtime. You could just daisy chain them all together and then on the final water catcher, send it down to your water barrel and gravity will do its thing. You don't need to power this part of the circuit whatsoever. Grab yourself two sprinklers and put them on each level and connect them from top to bottom. We'll be using a pump switch between the water barrel and the sprinkler here to power the sprinklers. Head over to your battery room, place two more branches with a blocker at the top. Over by your water barrel, we're going to place two timers with another branch below it and a switch on the left of it. The output of this branch is just connected to the input of each timer. The left timer goes into the toggle on of the right timer. The right timer goes into the toggle on the pump switch. The switch goes into the toggle of the left timer. Then we're gonna head back over here and we're going to take the right side of our first branch to power the second, set the second to six. The branch out will go into the power in of the blocker. 
the third branch will go into the left side of the blocker and then the blocker will power that branch and the right side of that branch will power the switch. This creates a little bit of a flickering that goes on so that it toggles the timers. The final power out on the second branch will power the branch that powers the timers. And here's a GIF on the screen so that you can just look at how it's done, but I figured I would explain it for anybody that needed explaining. Turn off the switch, unplug the timers and replug them back in. The left timer is gonna be set to 40, the right timer is gonna be set to 25, and you are now done with the entire circuit. You can also fit some more storage in here. If you just hop up on top of the box, you can place these boxes on top of this little frame right here. And you can fit another one in here while still being able to access everything in the planters. I would recommend getting a bag down, and if you're having issues placing it, just pick up the box and put the box back down and everything should work fine with your bag. And if you wanted to, you could fit a second bag in this triangle over here. Just pick the boxes up and throw it in there, then put the boxes back down. You should have no issues. Your head just might clip through the box a little bit when you spawn. Don't forget to put your windows down and repair them every single time as this will protect your vending machine. If you wanted to have a composting station, you could put down a little two by one over here, throw a trough down with a composter, and you'll be able to fit two horses in here behind the composter and get your fertilizer to make your crops grow faster. I like to put this ramp right here since we've got the composter on the other side, it makes it easier to get them in than stairs. And I would recommend putting a garage door down so that you don't smack your head on the double door every time you try to put a horse in here. 